When patients are a candidate for a knee replacement and they're trying to choose a surgical date, I usually have a conversation with them asking them which implant they would like. I like giving patients options because I think uh, patients, when they're more informed, they can make a better decision. So I offer two different knee replacements here at, at the hospital. Uh, the first is a traditional off-the-shelf knee replacement, which is the standard of, of orthopedics. So if you look at all the different companies that make knee replacements, uh, all of them except for one make an implant uh, that's it's, it's basically designed to be symmetric. So they make right and left sides, they make different sizes uh, for, uh, for different situations, narrow and wide. Uh, a lot of it was designed to be gender specific, so a lot of times people ask me about that. Uh, but basically the idea behind it is they make an implant that's symmetric and then they have different sizes, both medial lateral, anterior, posterior, and basically the idea behind those is in the time of surgery, you choose the size that's best for the patient. Uh, there's things you can do preoperatively, so a lot of places are offering uh, where they make cutting blocks that are, are fit for the patient. So a patient will undergo a CT or an MRI, and these cutting blocks are made, and they basically fit on the patient's anatomy and this is all done preoperatively uh, via software. And what it does is it makes it so when you put a traditional implant in, it's, it's made to fit that person's bone. Uh, but basically the implant itself is, is shaped and then you, you shave the bone of the patient that fits a traditional off-the-shelf implant. The other option that I offer people uh, is, a, is a new company that's been around for about 10 years. But the idea behind it is, is they make an implant that's specific for the patient. So instead of it being off the shelf and they're being on the, on the shelf and I say give me a size 6 narrow, with this one it comes as, in, as an only one option and this is basically made specifically for the person who's having surgery. They undergo a CT scan and the company uh, reproduces the patient's anatomy. And the difference with it is, is every patient's knee has a unique amount of offset of the, of the two condyles. And uh, through a range of motion, the amount of uh, offset that the patient has really determines kind of how much their knee bends and straightens. So with this implant, what they do is they, they do the same thing. You get a CT scan, and it has a very specific plan as to how you uh, place the knee. It comes with measured resections, uh, showing how much resection needs to be made for the implant to be fit in. And then the end product is, is really a knee that's made specifically for the patient. And I always show people that the condyles of most knees are very different and it does, it does matter when people are flexing how much rotation they get because of their condyles being different. It's all done by 3D printing, so the instruments that come, come in a box with the implant and these trials are all made by 3D printing and they're made specifically only for that one patient. And I, I think it adds a, a lot a higher degree of accuracy when you're putting the knee replacements in uh, because you're basically restoring the patient's anatomy back to what it was that they were born with. I have that conversation with patients, you know, a lot of times I offer them the option if they're really a candidate for both. If they're, they have some unusual anatomy or if they have too much laxity to their ligaments or they have some kind of prior trauma to their knee, then usually I'll, I'll tell them to go with something more conventional for the reason that there's a lot more options for constraining the knee to make the knee tighter. Um, when, when patients have trauma or they have a history of ligament laxity, Sometimes what you have to do is you have to make their knee more like a hinge so it bends uh, in just one direction. It doesn't have laxity in varus valgus. Uh, so a lot of times what I do if a patient's a candidate for both, I offer them both. If they're not really a good candidate for the custom knee replacement because of their deformity or prior trauma or other, other situations, then I basically tell them why and I tell them really I think that a more traditional knee replacement is a better option for them. Uh, just because if there was a, an off chance that they didn't have a pr appropriate ligament balance, uh, I couldn't, there's no flexibility options, there isn't the options of putting more constraint in. I think the biggest fear that people have when they come see me for knee replacements is that they're not going to have the right size for them. Uh, so a lot of patients ask, you know, how do you know you'll have my right size? Because uh, they've heard stories of people who they didn't have the right size for or the implant didn't function correctly because it was a different size than they needed. Um, and so I, I think with this, it, it takes away that fear because it, it only fits one way and it only fits one person. Uh, so there's, there's not options for sizes. I mean, it's basically made for the patient. A lot of times, uh, you know, my initial attraction to the implant was that uh, it's very precise. And in surgery, you like things to be very precise and very predictable. 
But I like the most about it after having used it is that the patient's range of motion uh, is very natural feeling. Uh, they, the amount of motion they have beforehand is very predictable afterwards because that's uh, basically you're putting back what you're taking off. So it's, it's more predictable, I guess. I think in terms of the implants, uh, a lot of times patients want to have uh, the latest and greatest of what they have in their area, but really it's a small drive to make to come here and, and to learn about this stuff. Uh, a lot of hospitals offer these cutting blocks for patients, uh, and they they uh, say they're custom knee replacements, but really the only company that makes an actual knee replacement that's custom is Conformis. Other companies make these cutting jigs, which are are specific to the patient, so they're custom cutting jigs. But the implant they're putting in is still a standard off-the-shelf implant. Um, so I think I think there's lots of advantages to coming in and, and, and uh, seeing if you're a candidate for the surgery. Sometimes patients ask how long it's been around on the market, and it's a really good question because there's a lot of companies who've had recalls. Um, what I tell people is this company's been around for 10 years, so it hasn't been as, around as long as the traditional knee replacement companies. So sometimes people choose to have a traditional knee replacement because the companies have a longer track record. And I think that's totally legitimate. There's actually, when I offer this to people, that's probably the number one reason why they choose a more traditional knee replacement, just because of the, the length of the, customer, the company's been around. Um, but I also tell patients that it's made out of the same material. Uh, so the, the materials are, are both the same, the plastics are both the same. Uh, so the, the fear of it being revised because of the implant failing should be no different than, than a traditional knee replacement, uh, aside from the, the traditional knee replacements being around for probably 20 or 30 more years uh, with design changes along the way. But I always have that conversation with people and sometimes people choose a, a traditional off-the-shelf implant for that reason. Most of the patients are very happy. I think it's the recovery period is, is very similar for people. I think um, there's some advantages to it where it'd be uh, people think it's less invasive, but I think very, uh, from a surgical standpoint, the procedure is very much the same, the recovery is very much the same initially. But when you start seeing the, the benefit of having this is when patients swelling and their, and their motion starts to return, and then you get a sense of how their knee functions. The initial post-operative period is very, very similar for both, I think. tools are all made by 3D printing, and 3D printing is kind of hard to explain, but basically it's a way to making three-dimensional objects uh, by a printer laying down material. Uh, so the whole, the whole kit of material is made at one time. Basically a printer goes through and lays different layers of material, uh, which the end result is a 3D, three-dimensional product like this. Um, and these tools are custom fit for each patient, and they really fit very well. I mean, the, the, the best thing about using these for surgery is uh, when you when you put this on the patient's bone, it really locks in place, and that's uh, one of the downsides that people uh, have have said about having the three-dimensional uh, cutting jigs made is that sometimes they don't fit really well. Uh, but the conformist knee is based off of a CT scan, and it makes this so they they fit right off the front of the bone. It really locks in position, so there's no doubt when you put these on where they're supposed to be, um, and it's just something that the company's developed through years of trial and error to make it so it's very precise. Um, that's the, the best thing about the instrumentation. Right now it's in Wisconsin, uh, we're only one of two places that has this available. Uh, just because I'm familiar with it, I've been trained with it, um, there's not a lot of surgeons who are doing this yet in the Midwest. It's very common along the East Coast where the company is, is there's a lot of surgeons who've been trained in, in putting these in. But it's very unique for us at, at Southwest Health where uh, we have the ability to offer this to patients. Well, I think there's there's a lot of reasons why not every orthopedist uses this. I think m most surgeons, they get familiarized with a specific implant and they feel very comfortable putting that implant in people so they know all the ins and outs and the nuances of the surgical procedure. So they, they, it's very hard for them to want to change because they get pretty good results with their with their with what they have. Um, the difference for me is I've trained on a lot of different knee systems, and so I was trained on this one when I was doing my fellowship, and I really liked it. And uh, I thought it was definitely something I wanted to offer to people when I came to Wisconsin to practice. 
Um, and I think for a lot of people, it's just hard for them to change what they've always been doing. And I think there's a lot of um, a lot of patients who are unhappy with their knee replacements, and it's hard to know why that is. I think some of the theory is is that we're putting an imperfect implant in patients because they're symmetric and the knee is not symmetric. So I think one of the thoughts are that maybe when patients have a, a knee that's made specialized for them, there'd be less chance for people have like laxity of their knee or they don't get quite their motion they had preoperatively. I, I think if I was a patient you know, looking at a knee replacement, I think I would consider coming here to Platteville for their knee replacement because this is, a, this is an option that's not offered anywhere else. I think a lot of times people uh, want to know why they'd have surgery in a smaller facility and I always tell them that the standard, the standard of care for these things is, is across the board and I think we do a really good job of doing personalized care. We have a small staff that all knows each other, we work together with one another uh, and we take really good care of patients here and I think when patients are looking to where to have their knee replacement done, I think they just need to be educated on what options are available and really what their care is going to be like while they're in the hospital. And I think we take really good care of patients here.